On the point of corruption, the problem is that it makes good government bad and bad governments worse. And how does that happen? It boils down to incentives. It doesn't matter where you are on this earth. You, if you live in New York or in London or in anywhere in Africa, we're all driven by incentives. Governments are incentivized as are individuals and our societies as a, whole, as a whole. The problem with aid, which is essentially giving free money to somebody with no recourse, means that the incentive structure, it introduces a very negative incentive structure. You can steal that money and have no recourse. You can use that money for non-productive activities and there's no penalty. There's no punishment. You don't lose office. You don't end up in jail. And because of that, what in economics they call, there's a rent without, you know, you, can ha you cannot have rent seeking, which is the economic term for corruption or, or graft. Um, you cannot have rent seeking without a rent. And unfortunately, aid provides that rent in the context of many African countries. And it's a very easy thing to steal. I don't think in, in the African context you can separate the aid model from the political leadership um, that we have. Um, the good African leaders that we do have across Africa is, are actually because they themselves have a, a moral qualm to actually do what's right. Um, and what I mean by that is it's too, all too easy um, if you are a good leader to become bad and a bad leader to become worse. So um, it, it, there's a reason why African history is littered with examples of despotic and tyrannical um, uh, you know, um, leaders across the continent who've stayed in power for many, many years. Um, and you know, even in those situations, they have uh, very clearly continued to receive aid monies. Um, I wish I could sit here and say, actually, this is a figment of the past. It's not. There's still many African leaders that are still facing charges, you know, very regularly. Most recently, we were still hearing of governments that um, are actually being um, sued for stealing aid money. So this is not something from the past. And I think it's virtually impossible to strip out the um, aspect of uh, political leadership from the aid model. The, the notion of, of lack of accountability immediately comes in when you've got an aid model. I think there have been a number of Africans. The, the debate about aid to Africa is going on every day across the continent. Um, unfortunately, many Africans do not have the space or the airtime to actually be able to comment on um, whether they, they either agree or even disagree about uh, the aid model. Um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's also quite interesting that uh, it's not just the average African who's not getting airtime. It's uh, the political leadership. Um, if you asked uh, Americans to name three African leaders, or maybe even just one African leader, one African president, and uh, you know who they could say they knew what their view was about where the continent is going and how uh, aid is helping or not helping, they wouldn't be able to do that because the face of Africa is not of Africans, whether it's the average African, nor is it the face of African leadership. That, that vacuum has been uh, taken over by other people.